It is double busy in here, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> a little bit, yes. Mm. I get frustrated that I can't find what I want. It's not the way that I want to be doing things. It would be nice to have the table back to what it's designed to be useful, which is eating around. Exactly. Haley's first step in returning the table into a dining space and not a workspace is for Tom to help Lynn clear it of all arty creations. With Lynn embracing the challenge ahead and the dining table cleared, it's moved outside so it can be cleaned. And for Haley, it can't come soon enough. If you do it quicker, that'll be really helpful. We're against the clock right okay, now. Okay, Diva. But now Haley is on the case. I've got a really good tip for wax, you know. WD-40. <laughs> I know it is my favourite tool. I know it is. But it really is good at removing, like, spilt candle wax. It lubricates it Does and it? then it, yeah, slides right off. Lynn? Yeah? Come and look at this table. This clever oil-based lubricant can also be used to get rid of crayon marks drawn on walls and remove gunk and scuff marks from ceramic floors. I'm happy with that. That's come up amazingly, really. Hasn't it? It has. Considering it had so much wax on it, I don't know what this is. This looks like some sort of polish or I, resin. I think it's resin. That will probably just Pick go... Pick off. Yeah. Just give it a quick wipe over with some dish soap to get rid of the lubricant oil. And then... And then we're good to go. Little did they know, but Lynn and Keith have the perfect unsuspecting window cleaner in the kitchen, usually reserved for a hot beverage or two. And Chez can't wait to share his unusual hack. Come in here, mate. I'm going to show you how to make a, a good cup of tea. Two tea bags. Okay. In the bowl. Pour some hot water. A couple of cups. Right. Let it brew for, for a minute or so. Yep. Black tea contains tannin. Right. That actually cuts through grime and grease. Apply tea to windows in a circular motion, then wipe off with a microfiber cloth, and they'll look as good as new. Working as a team gets the job done. Our cameras also revealed another health hazard in the form of rabbit droppings left on the floor, most probably trampled in from the lounge where the rabbits live. But now Tom has a tip to beat floor dirt. You could have a cup of water, maybe half a teaspoon of bicarb and create like a, like a thicker paste. Mm -hmm. Just put that down and just give it a nice buff out and see how you get on with that. The start of the show is hot water, because the hot water loosens it and breaks it down. Lovely. Look at that. Look at that. A final mop over with bicarb infused water will see off any remaining traces of filth. The floor's looking brand new. Whilst Ches and Tom graft away at grime. It's amazing what cleaning can do. Haley's next task is to clean the kitchen cupboards. So Lynn and Keith have a safe space to cook together. Because it's obviously a kitchen, you get a lot of grease just clinging to the kitchen unit. High traffic areas such as cupboards need to be cleaned regularly and sanitised to avoid catching salmonella. So now Haley has joined forces with Tom to banish the grease for good. This is why it's quite important to wipe them down daily if possible. Pre-spray with a standard shop-bought degreaser, then clean down using hot water mixed with dish soap. Scrubbed all that in, I'm going to take it off with a little bit of blue roll. You can just use a conventional household tea towel or another clean microfiber. But by using another cloth or blue roll as I'm using, you're removing any of that excess grease from the cupboard door. So therefore, they're no longer sticky. Cupboard grease gone, Tom's got a simple solution for cleaning down stains. You can see something's been thrown on, it's splashed, and it's run down gradually. With our lovely hot, soapy, sunny water, we're going to very, very carefully just apply that on there. And that hot water, obviously just breaking down that stain really gently, starts to come up really nicely now. I think they really are going to be impressed with what we've achieved here today. 
Previously, the kitchen was overshadowed by a mammoth craft collection on the dining table with candles and wax everywhere. Surfaces were grubby and piled high, leaving nowhere to cook or eat. Guys, come through <laughs> oh into my. your kitchen. Goodness me. But now it's been transformed into a spotlessly clean, inviting space where Lynn and Keith can finally welcome friends for dinner. It looks amazing. Oh my goodness, we've got surfaces. This is just an incredible transformation. We've taken away all of your craft stuff that's been moved up to the workshop. You've got a table to we've eat. We've got a table where we can eat. I know that you do enjoy experimenting with cooking and I really I feel that you can enjoy that now. I really love the way that the table has been rearranged. It makes the whole room look so much bigger. Yeah. I absolutely love it. Anita. I know. Do you enjoy being in this room? No. I don't come up till about two or three in the morning I when really... I know that I can just fall asleep. Anita. Yeah, I hate it. That's so sad to hear that. It's horrible. Amongst the mounds of clutter, Haley has spotted something foul. So, tell me about the windowsill. I think they've probably been sick, maybe. It's very embarrassing. Never feel embarrassed, not with us anyway, because okay. we've seen it all and it's fine. Yeah. Um, I mean, it's not fine. No, I know what you mean. But it's fine in the sense that... I know what you mean. We're here to help you. This is going to be my absolute mission now. <laughs> I want it to be your absolute favourite room in the mm, house that where you lovely. can rest, yeah. relax, and the cats, they can come with you. Just don't be sick on the window yes, sill. or anywhere else. Please and thank you. It is dusty as hell in here. And Tom can't wait to start wiping away the blanket that's accumulated, starting with a wardrobe. Wow. That is some serious build-up. Let's pick up any excess on that. If you suffer from mobility issues like Anita, you may struggle to keep the dirt at bay, especially in those awkward areas. Dan is going to be pivotal to the role of keeping this house clean for Anita because for these sort of areas, Anita can't get there because of mobility, but Dan can, so she just needs to call upon that help when she needs it. This cat poo trod into the carpet, look. So I'm surrounded in a world of poo. So it's just not adequate for anyone. And it's so unhealthy for her as well. After some seriously hard graft and bags of cat hair, Anita's bedroom is finally clean and fur free. Dude, we've just on the floor. Can you not? Is that all right? Cheers, mate. To avoid the mess and clutter returning in the future and undoing everyone's hard work, Haley has some space-saving ideas for Anita's bedroom. OK, that can be sealed. Go on, then. Just put it over the top. Vacuum packing her out-of-season clothes will save space and help keep the floor clean. Lovely. Dream. I've started doing her clothes. And look, where I've been using space-saving hangers, so these are really, really skinny hangers, Yeah. it frees up so much more room. I love it. I think we've done a good job in here. We smashed it. Piled high with clutter, Anita avoided her bedroom. Amongst the mountains of mess, Anita's feline friends had very much marked it as their territory. Wow. What do you think? Oh, it's wow. amazing. It's gorgeous. The team have now seized back control of Anita's room and she can look forward to a good night's sleep. How nice does it look in here? Beautiful. This whole room, the layout, it just did not work. No, so it didn't. I came in and feng shu hey. <laughs> you know, because my name's Hayley. <laughs> hey. Yes. And I know that you love your cats, but they were also making a bit of a mess in your bedroom, weren't they? So now, because you can see the entire floor, yes. if the cats were to have an accident, we just make sure that it is wiped yeah. up and cleaned. Yeah. And yeah. this will be a kind of fresh start for the both of you. Yeah. yeah. 
it's a lot more manageable and together you're like the dream team you're gonna nail this <laughs> this will be a absolute all-inclusive to ibiza when it comes to germs and bacteria i just know it because it's a high traffic area keyboards can harbor more bacteria than a loose eat and can become a breeding ground for harmful germs or invisible mold spores to see just how bad it's got bacteria busting Haley has a trick up her sleeve this side is bacteria this side mold and mildew so if there's anything on here this little sucker is going to find it i'm going to go and put this into the incubator we can then come back to it and check to see the bacteria so there is mold and you don't want to be breathing in yeah, no, mold. God, no. On this side, I mean, look at that bacteria. We don't really want to see any of these red specks no, here no at way. all. And I do think that by really giving it a deep clean sure. and making sure that we're anti-backing the area that is a high traffic area, yep. that's going to eliminate this problem moving forward for Anita. If that's there, yeah. what's it like over like the rest of the house. It's got to be cross contaminating everything, yeah. surely, so... Would you lick it for a million? <laughs> I'd do for a tenner. You're sick. Hayley wastes no time banishing the bugs that she's uncovered with her bacteria swab. And problem-solving Tom has a novel idea to make Anita's life easier. The mobility is sort of obviously limited. Yeah. If she just has a little cleaning station with a few cloths, some antibacterial liquid, she can use it wherever she wants, wiping it down, I think it's a perfect alternative for her. I love it. Just a thought. Bacteria are amongst the fastest reproducing organisms in the world. If left untreated, a synchro microorganism can turn into an army of trillions within 24 hours. Tom's portable cleaning caddy will help Anita break the mold in her home and keep the germs at bay. That is so darling. That's ace, isn't it? Like, genuinely, that... That excites me. It's like Christmas. <laughs> the rig camera showed Debbie ineffectively cleaning the bath and ignoring the large ring of mould that surrounds it. Now Ches wants to show her how it can be removed easily. I'm using the bleach and warm water to kill any germs. Warm, damp environments like bathrooms attract mould, so wet surfaces should be dried down after use to prevent it forming. It's brand new already. It's made a real difference. I know. Use a microfiber cloth to just wipe it off. Brilliant. But it's not just the dirty mould that's got a grip. Looking at your taps, mm -hmm. the build-up of lime scale is so bad, we're going to use a professional lime scale remover. Lime scale is a chalky deposit found in hard water that clings around taps. The longer it's left to build up, it attracts dirt and hardens, becoming difficult to remove. Look at that. Wow, it looks so different. Over to Debbie. Starting to move, looking good. It's a bit stubborn in places. You know my motto, power and a scourer gets the job done. I need more power. <laughs> <laughs> to remove lighter build-ups of lime scale around the base of taps, squeeze on lemon juice, leave overnight, then wipe off with a damp cloth for a sparkling finish. Hi, girls. Hi. Hi. How are you getting on? Yeah, I think we're um, uncovering some master artwork going on. <laughs> Is that crayon? Yeah, I think so. You can actually use a hairdryer really? on crayon, yeah, on the wall, and then wipe it with a microfiber cloth, or you can go ahead and use a steam cleaner. As the crayon wax melts in the heat, Haley's waxing lyrical with her steamer. Look at this, Debbie. Look how the steam's just melting it off. Oh, wow. But it's a different story when it comes to permanent marker pen. So the best thing to use for permanent marker is rubbing alcohol. There's a lot. <laughs> there is a lot of it, but I think let's have a go. Rubbing alcohol, also known as surgical spirit, removes marker pen by breaking down the chemicals in the ink. And a lot of elbow grease as well, <laughs> though, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> the ceiling light is covered in greasy dust. I'm going to soak your light in some dishwasher powder cuts through grease and grime you could just soak it and then the detergent does its thing 10 minutes and it'll come out pristine won't even need to scrub it that makes me so happy 
Look how shiny oh, wow. the silver's come. Like, literally, and I've not even scrubbed that. Rinse it with some cool water. I'll run like a glass cloth over it quickly just to dry it off because you don't want it sopping wet going up where the electrics are. Safety first. And then it'll be good to go. Looks good. Shiny, shiny. Doesn't that look nice, Jess? Yeah. Shiny, isn't it? Yeah. The toughest cleaning task is still to be tackled, the living room floor. I've got in here some very, very hot water. Hot water lifts everything. Dish soap. Nice squeeze of that in there. Give it a lovely little spin round. I've got a scourer pad. I'm using this because it's hard wearing tile. So, let's try it. Wow. Oh, we know the difference. There's a little bit of elbow grease going in as well. Just gentle, circular motions. That's how nice your floor actually is, or used to look. It's like a different oh colour. <laughs> Once you've done it a few times, you can use mop and bucket, the usual thing. Is that something we can do in the future? Definitely. Promise. I will. Dirt and bacteria come into the home on shoes, so a shoes off policy means floor cleaning is less work. There's a competition coming on here, Linda. I can feel <sighs> it already. A bit competitive yeah. here in our family. Oh. oh, look at that one. We've done three tiles of about 300. <laughs> so we've got a lot to do still in here. We need to crack on really, don't we? Yeah, let's get on with it. <sighs> there are three specific parts of washing machines that get very grimy. And Hayley's going to tackle all of them, starting with the drum. OK, so... The first place I'd like to investigate is, oh gosh, there's a lot of build up here, isn't there? Yeah. Is that, and I can smell, as soon as I open that, it smells really mildewy. Yeah. Here is your rubber seal. A closer look and a good rummage in the seal reveals some dodgy looking debris. I thought these are dog biscuits, they're not. They're pieces of, like, just, I think, hair that's yeah. got all kind of matted. Hair. But it's really, look, you can see around the seal, it's really, really mouldy and really, really built up. Yeah. We're going to be using car sponge. OK. <laughs> and we're actually going to be using just some dish soap. Oh, all right. OK? Yeah. It cuts through the grease and grime. And this is just warm water, so it's just warm, soapy water. And then we can begin... Can you see how that's coming oh, off yeah. instantly? Yes. I'm now going to go ahead and rinse off the dish soap. And then for the final bit, then you're going to get some kitchen roll. And you can then go ahead and put baby sterilising fluid onto the kitchen roll and kind of wedge that into the seal again so it's got the contact. Because yeah. you've got quite a large build-up of the mould, we really want that contact time so that it breaks that down. Right, now we have checked the drum. The next thing I want to go up to is the drawer. The drawers can get really grimy and mouldy. This is all like old detergent and it just starts to get a bit slimy. Dirty detergent drawers and mould magnets that can drag residue into the machine, covering your clothes in grey sludge and grime. Cleaning regularly will solve the problem. You just need to know how. Really simple. Put it in a bowl of water with some dish soap and just give it a good scrub and that will clean up really nicely. Inside here, there's masses of mould and on the top, there's lots of mould. So what I tend to do in my house is I use one of these. These are an ideal size for slotting perfectly into that drawer. And I'm just going to place some baby sterilising fluid onto the sponge. Make sure you wear gloves when you're doing this as well. And then this is going to be squished into your machine. Now, because there's quite a lot of mould in here, I'm just going to agitate it a little bit. But then what I'll do is leave this in to soak. We'll come back to that in about an hour. A clean of the filter, and haley has got it looking and working as good as new. OK, so that's the washing machine done. It's good to go. Wonderful, yeah. Yeah? That's great. Your dryer, Danny, is something that we really need to. 
follow the maintenance. There's always dog hair. Always, always. Okay, so with your lint tray, yeah. you need to make sure that you're emptying it after every single cycle. These are a really bad fire hazard. With like a dust attachment, you can vacuum any leftover bits off of it. Yeah. But it's not only the tray itself that can get blocked, the drawer can too. Danny. Yeah. I've just found this. Uh. That's really, really dangerous. This is stuff that hasn't remained within yeah. the lint tray. Yeah. So we really don't want any of this there. But this is definitely going to need vacuuming. Just for safety reasons, something like that, especially with all the dust and lint on it, it could easily catch fire. Sure. And naturally, we don't want your beautiful utility room going up in flames. Using the long nozzle on the vacuum will ensure that every last trace of lint is removed. It doesn't feel like there's anything left in there other than there's just small bits of lint now, but we certainly now don't have an entire glove. Yet. <laughs> so that's good. We've made progress. Yes. Finally, Hayley turns her attention to the drum. Keeping this clean will keep Danny's clothes fresh. All we're gonna do is go in with our warm dish soap. This has got some dish soap already in it and we're just gonna wipe around the inside of the tumble dryer. Does it look all good now? <laughs> yeah. I just wanted to have a little peek at the top. It's come up lovely. Obviously the lint tray, make sure you're doing that after every use. But with this, the actual wiping of the inside of the tumble dryer, you could maybe do that once a month. And then once you've done that, just dry it off with a nice microfiber cloth and you're good to go.